Today on The Joy of Editing, it's TK Friday, and I'm doing a full edit of a juvenile rainbow lorikeet. What a beautiful bird. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. It is TK Friday. Today we have another image by Tony Nicolarci, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly this time, Tony. This is a beautiful image of a juvenile rainbow lorikeet, such a beautiful bird. So this is our edit for today. As always, I start out here in Lightroom, and then I basically use a linear profile and click on Auto and make sure that my whites and blacks are not clipped. And I also sent this image into Topaz Photo AI just to sharpen it up a little bit and to get rid of some of the noise because this was shot at ISO 1600 so there's a bit of noise in it but it's all cleaned up for you now don't forget you can download the image as well as the PDF notes I'll have Dropbox links in the description below this video in order to see those links click on more that'll open up the description and scroll down through you'll find the Dropbox links and also if you go down further you'll find a contact me link if you would like me to edit one of your images on a TK Friday just contact me just click on that link and let me know oh one other thing I forgot to tell you in this edit I did do a crop so I'm gonna click on the uh, crop button here and you can see I did crop this image in I thought it looks better with a nice crop on it so there we go okay now we're at the point where we need to go into Photoshop and work with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop so I would just right click on my image go to edit in and edit in Photoshop 2024 but I'm already there and now here we are in Photoshop and by the way if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Well, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is save our little bird out as a channel. So what we're going to do is click right here. This will select our subject. It missed a little bit of the claw back here, so I'm going to get my lasso tool. And you can just type L, that's a shortcut. Hold your shift key down to add, and just draw right around there, just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's overshot this area a little bit, so hold your option or alt key down, and we can subtract that little area right there, just like that. And now we can save it as a channel. And to do that, just click this button right here, and we're going to call this bird and we'll click OK and now we can see it is saved out as a channel so I'll be using that as a masculator I still have a selection click this button right here and we'll deselect it the first thing I want to do is give this image balance and contrast and to do that I'll use a color grading tool but what we'll do is come up and click on the luminosity mask button I'll click on midtones 3 and all that really does is protect me from clipping shadows and highlights it's for protection we're going to output that to a color grading tool and there you can see my mask right there. Now we can adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights. I think I'll start out with the midtone, so I'll click on the midtone button and I'll adjust this slider to the right to right around 40, I believe it is, right there, just to open up the midtones. And now we'll move to the shadows. So I'll click on the shadows button and I want to darken up the shadows, so I'll move this to the left to right here, minus 21. But already that's looking really good. And now let's click on Highlights. And I'm going to take this Highlight slider to the right, and I'm going to drag it right here. So here's my before, and here's my after. So already it looks really good. I'm not even going to mess with the color grading, because everything looks really nice here. Now at this point, I really look at the image and study it, and I'm noticing that these twigs in the background here are all very light and I would really like to tone those down so we can keep the emphasis on the beautiful rainbow lorikeet. I'll need to create a mask to really target these twigs. So what we'll do is right now my color grading tool is in the way. Click the X. Nothing will change on your color grading layer. We're going to click on the luminosity mask button because I want to find a mask that will really target the twigs. And I think I'm going to go with the Lights 1. Now, we always get Lights 1 by default. Here's Lights 2, by the way. 
but I think I prefer lights one. Now we can go ahead and tweak this mask. So I want to really center in on those twigs. So I'm going to try something I've never done before. This button right here, this is new to the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. And if you click it, it gives you a black and white adjustment layer, which is really nice. And what I'm going to do here is really pull back on my yellow. So what I want to do, I know there's a lot of yellows back in here and some green. So I'm going to take the yellows and drag this to the left and see how I can really darken these areas back here. And that's what I'm going for, to really darken them up. And I'm going to try the greens as well. Take the greens and really pull the greens back too, to right around there. See, but I'm nicely isolating these twigs and it's really nice. Now I do have the bird here, but I can take care of that. And I'll show you how I do that. But what I want to do is darken the twigs. I'm going to output this to a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to put it in the multiply blend mode. So we can click this button right here on the combo or CX. I have my CX panel opened up for actions and here's my combo panel. So either panel you can do it. So I'll click on multiply and see how the twigs get all darkened. And now I think that's a little too strong. So I'll take this opacity back and I think I'll go back to like right about here, like minus 70. Here's the before and here is the after. Now it's darkening up my bird as well, and I don't want that. So what I can do is come to this mass calculator and either the combo or CX panel, click it, click on bird, and we can subtract the bird and it subtracts it out. So now you can see it's only affecting the twigs in the background. So all with just one adjustment there, thanks to that mask. Now the, the twigs look a little bit on the blue side and I tried something a little bit different here. So what I did was got a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to click this button right here and I'm going to clip it to the layer below by clicking this button right here. You know what I can do is, and I tried this first, take the saturation and pull the saturation back. You see that? And it's only going to target those twig areas. But I thought, okay, that's cool. But I wanted to try something different. So I tried colorize. I'm going to click on colorize. That'll colorize the targeted areas. And what I'm going to do is take this hue slider and bring it over to right here. And now I'll take this saturation slider and drag it to the right. You see how they're getting warmer? I don't want to give it too much saturation, but I think right here should do the trick. So let me shut this off. So here's the before. See all that blue color cast there? And now it's gone. All with the help of this colorize on the hue saturation adjustment layer. Pretty cool, right? So I shifted the hue and gave it a little bit more saturation. So I'll shut these two layers off. So there it is before and here it is after. But you see how it nicely causes us to be focused more on the bird than on the background. And I love being able to clip a layer to a layer below and it's, you know, targeting just the masked areas and using this colorize. I've never done that before for this, but it really nicely warmed up these branches. So that was pretty cool. So keep that one in the back of your mind. The next thing I want to do is you see these little leaves right on here. There's a little bit of red and green here. So I thought I'd like to bring up their saturation a little bit closer to the bird because it's sitting close to the bird and they seem a little desaturated. So I'm going to use this great tool, the object selection tool, and I'm going to be in the lasso mode. Now you have a rectangle and a lasso mode, so I'm clicking on lasso. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around this first leaf like this and Photoshop will grab these leaves really nicely. Okay, there. Now hold your shift key down and then you can add. So we're just going to come and add all of these leaves in here. And again, don't forget, hold your shift key down. Continue to hold that shift key down as you're adding these leaves in. And that way they will be added to the selection. So we're almost done here. I just want to make sure I grab all of these leaves and now they're all selected. Now, what do I want to do with this selection? Well, I want to add saturation. So let's use a hue saturation adjustment layer. We can come to the multi mask panel and click this button. And you'll notice we do have a selection by looking at the selection indicator here. So when I click this, it adds that selection right to the layer right there. And what I want to do is right here where it says master, click on this drop down. And I know there's going to be a lot of yellows there. So I'm going to click on yellows and I'm going to drag the saturation to the right to right about here. 44. Check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. But see how it just brings up that saturation. 
And now there's some red in here, so we can click the drop down again and click on reds. And I'll bring up the saturation on the reds to right here. So here is the before, and here is the after. And don't forget, if you feel the effect is too strong, you could just come to the opacity and pull back on the opacity if you felt it was a little bit too strong. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it up. And now I continue to study the image, and I'm looking at the bird and I'm thinking I'd like to have a little bit more detail in that bird not too much but we're going to use a clarity action for that you can click on your TK action button to open up your actions but my actions are already opened on the CX panel so I'm going to find the clarity action and give it a click and then this high pass dialog comes up this is a high pass filter and I'm going to take the radius over to like right about here now you see that nice uh, detail that pops out I'm gonna click OK but now there's a problem because it looks not good on the rest of the image here's the before and here's the after but I only want to apply this to the bird so here's what I'll do I have a mass calculator with that bird already saved out remember from the first step so we'll click this button right here we'll click on bird and we'll click this button to apply the bird to a mask and now check it out, it's only on the bird. Isn't that cool? So now we just have that extra detail on the bird. Now, I still think it's a little bit too strong. So what I did was I came up to my new friend, the Edit Blend If button. So I clicked on the Edit Blend If button and I sampled out some different Blend Ifs, you know? And the nice thing here is you can see it in real time. So let's try it on uh, Light Swan. See how it tones it down? There's Light Swan. Let's try it on like Midtones 3. There's Midtones 3, and then I tried Darks 1, and I liked how it was affecting it. Now, let me uncheck this, see where it says gray. This will shut the Blend If off, so let me uncheck this. This is without the Edit Blend If, and this is with the Edit Blend If. See how it just tones it down a little bit? Again, without the Edit Blend If, and with the Edit Blend If. It just tones it down a little bit. And now let me go ahead and shut off the Clarity layer. So here it is without the Clarity on the bird. And here it is with the clarity. I'm going to go ahead and X out of the blend if. Now I'm studying the image and I'm thinking I would like to have that background go a little softer, maybe a little darker. So I thought, you know what? An Orton effect gives you a nice soft glow effect and it gives you a little extra saturation and it darkens the image somewhat. So let's try the Orton effect. So if your actions aren't open, click the TK button and mine are already open. So I'll click Orton effect. And you can see, there we go. I'm going to take the Gaussian Blur just the way it is and click OK. Now that looks really strong, right? And usually you would have to really tone this down if you wanted to use it. But I'm going to leave it at 100% because don't forget, I have a bird saved out in the mask. And now I do not want the bird in this effect. So what I can do is click on the mask calculator, click on bird, and then click the minus to subtract it. And you notice now the effect is only on the background. Pretty cool, right? But it's also affecting these leaves right here. But you see right here on this hue saturation layer where I used the object selection tool and made that mask. If you hold your command or control key down and click on that mask, you'll load it up as a selection. And now we could come to the mask calculator and you can see the selection indicator and you can see the marching ants on the leaves, right? So go back up. Make sure the Orton Effect group is active right here, the mask, and then click on the mask calculator and click on active selection and now subtract that from the mask. And now we can deselect the selection. And now you can see here's the before. Now you'll notice it's only on the background. It's not on the leaves or the bird. So pretty cool. So we were able to mask out the bird and those leaves. Now, I think the background is a little too saturated, so how can I take care of that? Well, if you're thinking a hue saturation adjustment layer, you're right. Now, right now, if I click on the hue saturation adjustment layer, it's going to go inside this group. If you hold your command key down or control key down and click on here, it'll go above the group, but I want it in the group. So what I'll do is just click on it. It goes right in the group. Now, this mask is controlling what's happening here. So when I adjust the hue saturation adjustment layer, the bird or the leaves will not be affected due to the fact that they are masked out. Now, I could go up to the drop down and click it and just work on yellows and greens, but the background's mostly yellows, so I think the master will do just fine. 
So I'm going to pull back the master saturation to right about here. And check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. But see how it really tones down that all that yellow is back in there. But the Orton effect gave me a nice soft background. It darkened the background a little bit. And there's no effect on the bird or these leaves. So here's the before the Orton effect. And here's after. But now the bird is really front and center really grabbing our viewer's attention, which is what we want. The thing I want to do next is bring out a little bit of dark and light contrast on this bird. I'll start out with darks first. So to do that, we're going to click on the luminosity mask button and let's try to find a mask. I know it's going to be darks that I want to target. So here's darks one, here's darks two, and that's too broad. Here's darks three. See all the light areas on the bird. These are the areas that I want to pick. Now, I only want it to go on the bird. So what we're going to do is click on the mask calculator, click X, because we're going to make an intersection. So click X, and then we're going to go up and click the My Channels button. And I want the bird, so we're going to click on the bird. And now we need to click on Equal to make that calculation. So now we see that Darks 1 mask is only on the bird. And now I want to output that to a Curves Adjustment Layer, and I'll put it in the Multiply Blend Mode to Darken. But here's a little tip for you. Right now, if I click on the Curves Adjustment Layer, it'll go inside of that Orton Effect group. I don't want that. Hold down Command or Control and click on the Curves button. And when you do that, it'll put it above the Orton Effect group. You see that? Very important. And now we can click on the Multiply button. And now you can see that we've darkened the darkest tones on the bird, which is too strong. So what I'm going to do is go to the Layer Opacity, and I'll take this the whole way off. This is the way I like to do it, and then just build it up slowly till I come to a point that I like. And I think I like it right here, right around 36%. Here is the Before. And here is the after. But can you see how it just darkens those really dark tones? And next, we'll work on the light tones. Now, this will be similar to the dark tones. I'm going to come up to the Luminosity Mask button and click it. And now I need to find a light area I want to target. Here's lights one. Here's lights two. Now, I'm just looking at the bird, and I think lights two is going to be good. I'm going to go back to the mask calculator. Now, I want to intersect that lights to mask with the bird so click x for intersection go to my channels this button right here and click it and again we want the bird so click on the bird and now we need to click equal to make that calculation and now you can see i have the lights to mask inside of the bird and now we need to output that again we'll use the curves again but i'll use a screen blend mode this time i don't have to worry about going inside that group. So I can just click right on this curves button right here. And there we can see it. And now we'll click on the screen blend mode button. And now we can see here's the before and here's the after, but it's way too light. And again, I'll take this layer's opacity the whole way off to zero. And now I'll start to build that up slowly. And let's see how far do I wanna go. And I think I wanna go to right about here. So, here is the before, and here's the after. It's subtle, right? But it's just a little lightning. And if I shut these both off, there's the before, and there's the after. You know what? You may say it's subtle, but you got to pay attention to details here because we are crafting an image. We are almost done. I'm going to grab my lasso tool. So type L if you don't have your lasso tool. And what I want to do is just lasso around this bird something like about like this because i want to do a freehand vignette and once you've lassoed you could come to your actions if your actions aren't open click your tk button and come and click on freehand vignette the gaussian blur dialog comes up click ok i always take the radius just the way i get it click ok and here is the before and here is the after now you'll notice we have this layer freehand vignette. It's in the multiply blend mode at a default setting of 30%. Now what I always like to do is click on my edit blend if button. And I always like to try no darks one just to protect my darkest darks. Here's no darks one. And I like that. And then I'll try no darks two. I don't like that as much. So I'm going to stick with no darks one. It's a little bit darker. Here is my before, and here is my after, but I think that really helps. Now I'm noticing one more issue. 
and that is this branch back here it's really light and i'm noticing some other little light branches around here so we could take care of those fairly easily and i think the best way to do that is with a zone mask i'm going to x out of my edit blend diff nothing changes here let's go and click on the zone mask button and let's click on a light area in here like right here let's click ok and that really targets those light areas really well and I'm not even going to adjust anything here. I'm just going to output this to a burn tool. Now, the burn tool has two sides. It has a 50% gray and a transparent. You can use either side. I'm just going to use a 50% gray. So I'm going to click right here. And now it sets us up with a black brush. And right now my opacity is at 30%. And that is what I want. So what I'm going to do at this point is make my brush a little bit larger. And I can just start to burn down these light areas now i haven't lifted my brush yet so now i've lifted it i'm going to go down here again and over in here again i've lifted it again and i'm going to hit this maybe a couple more times i'm going to come over here a couple times and this branch over here's a little light so i'm going to hit it and maybe come across here and maybe right there and it's only targeting those light tones maybe right there right there and down in here but anything you feel is too light you get the point right just darken them down and this mask will protect you even back in here a little bit i'm going to get this a little more so i am lifting my brush and hitting that again so check it out here is the before and here is the after so at that point i think we're done now there is, if you'll notice right here, see this little leaf, I think it's come down here and here. If you don't like those, what you can do is, right now I have a selection, so let me deselect by clicking this button right here, and let's click this button to put a blank pixel layer above there. You could grab your remove tool, the excellent new remove tool, so click on that. And I have mine set to sample all layers and remove after each stroke, so I can just come here and just paint right there and get rid of that and I missed a little piece right there and get this little piece right here let's get rid of this little leaf right here because it's kind of bugging me and anything you don't like use the remove tool and you can get rid of that stuff so we started out the image looked like this and now it looks like this and hopefully our juvenile rainbow lorikeet is happy with his image and I hope you are too. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. I hope you go ahead and download the image and the PDF notes and give this edit a try. It's a really beautiful image of a really beautiful bird. A juvenile rainbow lorikeet. Thank you, Tony, for this image, for letting us use it and learn from it. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and also click all so you receive all notifications. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.